Hey buddy, it's Garmir. I'm coming to you on a you know, late Wednesday afternoon. Uh, take a little break from doing some yard work and just wanted to come on real quick and uh, say a few words of uh, remembrance for uh, another artist we, we uh, recently lost, or just yesterday, uh, John Abercrombie. Uh, I died yesterday at the age of 72. Uh, great guitarist, composer, uh, was all around musician. Uh, I kind of have that same feeling when I first heard uh, Edgar Froza had passed, uh, just kind of just really taken aback by it, as they were both quite active musically uh, right up until the end. And uh, I just learned of it this morning from uh, Derek's video. And um, I know Gary, who's probably the biggest Abercrombie fan I know, I was going to write him and see if he had found out and he, he wrote to me and because he you know he just heard the news so uh, yeah it hits anyone hard who uh, you know is a fan of his and um, I, I know for me personally uh, he's roughly the same age as my folks so anytime someone of that generation leaves us you know it it, uh, it hits home even a little harder so um, uh, yeah he's someone who I've enjoyed for uh, for many years myself uh, I first heard him on uh, uh, Kenny Wheeler's Dear Juan, Where, Dear Juan album from, um, I think that one was from 1977. And I first heard that in uh, 93, I think, as a junior in high school. And I think aside from Kenny Wheeler himself, uh, he was the only other artist on the album who I wasn't aware of at the time. But I uh, was really struck by his, uh, his playing right away and, uh, and also getting into ECM early on at that time. You couldn't help but get into his music and you know, just anyone else you came across. So uh, I just pulled out a few things that I've been listening to out in the yard here this afternoon. I just played this earlier. Even tire. Uh, of course, it's a Jan Gabarak album. But, uh, it's probably among my favorite of um, album that albums that Abercrombie appeared on. It wasn't actually under his own name. This one's uh, recorded in 1980, also with Nana Vasconcelos. See the, the variety of instruments played between them. Uh, John's playing on here is particularly uh, really interesting, vibrant colors he gets out of um, the guitar and uh, the 6 and 12 string guitars and mandolin guitar. Something Gary and I talked about over the years that uh, we always wish he would go back to that playing the mandolin or electric mandolin guitar, which of course had a very distinctive uh, sound on it. But this is probably one of the more atmospheric things that uh, that I've heard him uh, appear on. Just uh, excellent stuff. Probably more appropriate for uh, mid-November than uh, August, but um, has kind of a an appro appropriately allergy-like quality. So I just had this on earlier and uh, have this playing right now. Uh, Animato, the Vince Mendoza and synthesizers and composing, uh, John Christensen drums percussion, Gary's favorite drummer. Uh, this one's from uh, recorded in '89. Another really beautiful uh, atmospheric album. He played in so many different contexts over the years. Uh, John, he started out he started out with ECM I, I think in 1974 on his uh, Timeless album. Uh, Jan Hammer and uh, Jack Dijonette and played with Gateway uh, also with Dijonette and uh, Dave Holland they'd played you know on and off over the years and then had a wonderful quartet with uh, Richie Byrock on piano uh, from the tail end of the 70s into the 80s and uh, all through playing with various other people other albums other labels and uh, also had the trio with uh, to Mark Johnson and Peter Erskine throughout the 80s and a little bit into the 90s and had a really nice organ trio got Dan Wall and uh, Adam Nussbaum and then in more recent years maybe over the last 10 to 15 years was playing in uh, back with his uh, back with the quartet uh, either with piano or, or for a while it was with violin because Mark Feldman and violin and actually this is uh, oh, this is the final album here uh, just came out this year, uh, up and coming. And Mark Copeland piano, Drew Gress double bass, and Joey Barron on drums. So, yeah, I have this lined up to play later. Very good album. 
I don't think anything I've heard of his over the years, I mean, it's it's all been good. I mean, whatever, again, whatever context he played in, he was, you know, always added to it. Wonderful here with the uh, studio for photographs. I was really fortunate to hear him play live on, on a couple of occasions. Uh, I played with Charles Lloyd in the early 2000s. In fact, when I went to see him, it was about a week and a half or two weeks after 9-11. He was playing at the Jazz Showcase, and of course there was such a heavy feeling around that time, and uh, you know the music definitely elevated things. What I really remember uh, from John himself was, uh, actually I went to two of the shows because it was a week-long engagement, and one of them I was sitting in the front row, which was maybe maybe six to eight feet from uh, the stage, There's just a little table in front, and I was right in front of John, and his, he had his amp amplifier kind of tilted back somewhat, and uh, I forget which song it was, you know, I'm sure about Ch uh, Charles's songs, but he had this incredible, really a blistering solo. Uh, really the closest thing I've heard him play to blues rock, using a lot of wah-wah and a little bit of distortion, but it was just really, it was like he was channeling the old blues masters, but it would make any any blues rock player really, uh, you know, take notice. I think the audience and even the band members were taken aback by it. Maybe John himself didn't even know he was going to play that until he did, but uh, I'd never heard before or since, you know, him play like that. and. Uh, it was just a really, you know, heavy, special moment, and uh, yeah, something I'll always, uh, among other things, I'll always remember. And I heard him live one other time, several years later, actually at the same venue. Uh, for some reason, during that time, I think he was playing with the quartet, which had uh, Mark Feldman on violin. But for some reason, he was touring briefly, I guess briefly, with the uh, an organ trio. Uh, not the usual organ trio that he was playing. He played with a few years earlier. It was a different person on organ, but Adam Nussbaum was on drums, and uh, it was the man himself. I got to meet him afterwards, and uh, kind of like the, with the members of Oregon, you know, it was like meeting one of my folks' friends. You know, just uh, had a really nice, friendly vibe, and you know, you kind of felt like you knew him already. And in a way, you you know, you do you, you do get to know him through their music, you know hearing their records all through the years. So I was just really fortunate to get to um, experience them live. And uh, it's another one. I haven't played this one in a real long time. Yeah, this is the uh, aforementioned uh, organ trio. The Dan Wall organ, Adam Nussbaum drums. This one's from 96, recorded in New York. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, it seemed whatever, uh, you know, whoever he played with, he always had that, uh, I think he was really a, a true virtuoso, which I think the term for some tends to mean uh, someone with, you know, the greatest technical facility. Uh, for me, though, it really means, you know, from what I've heard over the years and how you contextualize it, to me it's someone who has an acute sense of, context um, you know they can they can play with anyone and they never lose their sense of identity but they always enhance whatever situation they're in and they never sound out of place with again you know sounding always sounding like themselves to me that's what a virtuoso is and I think he's one of the prime examples of, of true virtuosity you know, never really flashy or you know playing tons of notes within a short span of time, but he always uh, always made the notes mean something, and, you know, whoever he played with, uh, you know, again, always enhanced the situation. And uh, yeah, just a few of the things I have, you know, just what I've been listening to uh, and have lined up to play later, and I'll probably pull out some more stuff uh, you know, later on as I go. But, uh, yeah, just wanted to come on real quick and uh, say a few words. And, uh, yeah, it's, again, it's hard to believe that he... Uh, won't be getting any more albums from him or you know live performances but um, yeah he's uh, you know just one of the greats and uh, if you're not already familiar I highly recommend uh, uh, checking something of his out uh, you can start from the beginning or you know just uh, check on YouTube there's a lot of uh, a lot to uh, call from and if you're already a fan and have some of his stuff uh, well, I'm sure you haven't already you'll be uh, pulling stuff out some stuff out to play and, uh, very well worth hearing. So, uh, 
may rest in peace, John. Uh, uh, yeah, you very much missed. So, uh, well, just want to come on real quick. Until next time, peace, love, and joy.